The question of what is the One Piece treasure is one that is ingrained in this series as a whole. Obviously, it's in the fucking title. Much like how Dragon Ball had the Dragon Balls, this mythical item of unimaginable wealth is something that everyone in the world seeks out. Whether it is just simply to keep other people away from it, to prove that it exists, to just have the bragging rights that you were the one to find this unimaginable unattainable object, it permeates the series. Not just for the characters within it, but for the fans as well. We take the role of various different characters in the series as well. The speculation, what could it be? Where is it? What is the big deal? If Roger were to find something of such unimaginable wealth, wouldn't that be significant? Wouldn't that ultimately be something that would be spread far and wide of what exactly it is? But we haven't even so much as heard a theory from any character in the actual series of what the One Piece might actually be. They're under this assumption that it is just generally treasure, but is that actually the case? Is it as simple as that, that it is just treasure? something material, something to spend. I believe it's treasure, but I believe it's so much more than that. I believe it is a record of history and knowledge. That's why Robin in this series has become so crucial. She will be the one to be able to basically tell us the deeper meaning behind the things that maybe Luffy might not be able to appreciate. Ancient history that spans centuries of the world. Knowledge about why the moon is the way it is. Who was Joy Boy? What is the will of D? Who are the people of D? Because obviously they have some connection to the ancient kingdom that used to exist way back when. Why, why was it that all of these commanders of the world, these kings, came together to stop one culture, to, for an entire populace to come together and say that we need to hide this forevermore. That's suspect. That is suspect on a level that just makes no sense. It boggles the mind. There has to be something deeper here. Was it just the greed of all these nobles that ended up being the catalyst for them wanting to erase what is probably the a whole bloodline of D? Or is it something more to it than that? Were they afraid of something, maybe? They say that the D is the immortal enemy of the gods, the celestial dragons. They are slayers of dragons, apparently, or is it something else other than that? We know, thanks to various different people who have carried the D name, that it isn't just some singular destiny, as we've seen many of them die, for any and all kinds of reasons. We've seen so many different personalities from those who carry the will of D, as it were. There's no set commonality between them. Nothing set except a smile. And even then, it seems to just be a smile of defiance in the face of overwhelming odds, in the face of certain death, in the face of challenges to what they are pursuing in life. They smile. What's the significance of that? Is there any significance at all? Who was Joy Boy? Because it's obvious that he is at the crux of all of this. It was obvious that Joy Boy had to have been a member of the Clan of D. The way Kaido mentioned that Luffy could not be the Joy Boy, that title, who was the first one to carry that title? Was there something deeper to that name of Joy Boy? Was it a person's actual name that's just being passed on? Did Roger become the Joy Boy? It seems that was not the case as 
when he actually did find the One Piece, he seemed to lament the fact that he was not able to live in the age of the next Joy Boy. It seems very obvious that the new Joy Boy is Luffy, but what is it exactly about Luffy that qualifies him to be the new Joy Boy? His optimism? His willingness to always go the distance? His tenacity? That honestly seems to be the thing that draws so many people towards him. That feels like that's what Roger was ultimately the most interested in meeting this new Joy Boy for. His tenacity. His boundless optimism. His willingness to always go the distance. To do the most ridiculous and outlandish things. Front, right, center, all over the place. Just because he's pursuing what he wants to pursue. But... Didn't Roger do that? For every answer you could possibly form, more questions arrive as well. What is it that separated Luffy from Roger? That's ultimately what we really have to ask ourselves. But thanks to Odin's flashbacks, we've seen that Luffy and Roger were so alike. It was insane. The childish nature, the willingness to die for their dreams, the thought of if I die, I die and so be it, the willingness to stick their neck out for their friends no matter what the case may be. What is it that separates Roger from Luffy? I think once we find that out, we'll fully understand what it means to be Joy Boy. Hell, maybe there isn't anything that actually separates them. Maybe it was just this fact of... Luffy was born in the correct time. Is it something as simple as that? Luffy was just the lucky one to be born at the time right enough to be able to unlock the One Piece in, in its entirety? Does it have a connection with the moon? I still question that. Something is relevant about when Eneru, or Eno, however you want to pronounce it, went to the moon, met all these little tinkerbots and all that, met space pirates. Is that going to have any relevance? What about the Shandorians and the various different Sky Island inhabitants? There's some connection to them and the sky. And I feel like that's also a reason why Uro hasn't been involved in the story up until this point. He's going to have some deeper connection with the Shandorians' connection with the moon, the One Piece, and the world at large. That's also some kind of reasoning behind why Bartholomew Kuma might have rebelled. Maybe he knew too much. Maybe there was a deeper connection beyond everything else. Maybe that's why he became a revolutionary. There's something deeper going on with Bartholomew Kuma, and I wouldn't be surprised if it also had something deeper to do with the One Piece. Because the further we get in terms of this story, the more likely that everything that we have seen that hasn't been answered all the questions that we have have some connection to the one piece or maybe they don't who's really to say i'm asking so much more questions than what i'm answering but for every revelation i feel like i come to that might get me a little bit closer to the truth there's another question another two ten questions even does the one piece have a connection to the all blue Honestly, a sea that contains every kind of fish out there imaginable? We've basically been to every sea across the entirety of the world. Will the all blue only be revealed after the One Piece is found? There's been this rumor going around that ultimately the finding of the One Piece will lead to the destruction of the Red Line. But is that possible? What could possibly destroy the Red Line in its entirety? We're not thinking Attack on Titan kind of things and something will come bursting out of it. Will it be the ancient weapons that will ultimately destroy it? The Sea Kings going after the Red Line, destroying it, bringing down the holy city of Marijoa, freeing all the slaves, because to bring them down from on high? Hell, is it possible that at one point God Valley was where the Red Line was, and it was just built up? But that couldn't be. God, the God Valley incident was only so long ago, and to build up the entirety of the Red Line? No, that's impossible. But how did it disappear? You know, why 
What was it that allied Garp and Roger together the way that they were allied? To defend, of all people, the Celestial Dragons? What was it about the plans of Rock D. Zebek that ultimately ended up threatening the world as a whole? Was it the threat that whatever he was going after, if he were to obtain it, would he have just basically wreaked havoc on the world at large? Or was it something that someone like him just shouldn't be allowed to have? That he wasn't deserving of it? And it took two members of the Will of D to just stop another one? Is that what we're ultimately coming to in terms of Blackbeard's ambition? What is Blackbeard's connection to Zebek? Is he his son? It wouldn't be too surprising. It's always a possibility. I'd honestly be willing to believe that. Or maybe is it possible even that in some way, shape, or form, Blackbeard is a reincarnation of Zebek? Something about him, some kind of will has been passed on to Blackbeard and it's dangerous. As dangerous as the likes of Kaido and Big Mom combined, there's something deep and dark underlying within Blackbeard that is going to shake the foundation of the world, and he is the last person who should find One Piece. Is it possible that at one time the One Piece was on God Valley, and it's simply because of the fact that this island is somehow able to travel? Hell, maybe it's on the back of a giant turtle, and it's just been moving across the oceans, unbeknownst to anyone out there. One moment the island is there, the next it's gone. Or is it something more than that? Maybe it floats it off with the power of Shiki. Who knows? Is Shiki ever going to be introduced to the series and will it be relevant? The various different members of the Rock's Pirates. What was that conflict all about? Big Mom doesn't really talk about it like it was very significant and neither does Kaido. They break allusions to it but no one talks about it in full why is that such a big event the loss of their captain you think they would mention it a little bit more here and there but they don't we know that the one piece is a tangible treasure it's not going to be something like the friends we made along the way or just a simple story about this man named joy boy who did these incredible wild and outlandish things but I think that's a part of it. There will be treasure. There will be artifacts beyond your wildest dreams. Maybe weaponry. Maybe the cure for all thing that was lost to the annals of history. Maybe the original Pluton is lying there. Maybe the road to a world that is better than what the, our characters live in now is there as well. Maybe at one point the world was a more unified pe people a more unified populace, a situation very akin to maybe like the Tower of Babel or that ancient library of knowledge that unified the world at one point. The people were a unified front in all things, but greedy people from the outside who wanted what they felt should be theirs and theirs alone destroyed that peacefulness, that cooperation, broke down relations, everyone became mistrustful of each other, and only those who were willing to reap the benefits were able to live on high, literally. In all this time, of the ancient weapons, we know of Poseidon, Pluton, and Uranus. <laughs> Uranus. Um, but in terms of those, we only know so much about the first few, namely Poseidon and Pluton. We know that Poseidon is the name of the mermaid princess who's able to command the sea kings. Pretty straightforward. Pluton, a little not so much, but Frankie had blueprints to it. I wouldn't be surprised if he incorporated anything from them into the Thousand Sunny or even the Battle Frankies. I would not be surprised. I wouldn't put it past them. But then we come to Uranus. Its name having to do with the sky, so I have to assume that maybe I wouldn't be surprised if Eneru might have found it, or it might have some connection to Uro, because I feel as though Oda has set something up with them that at some point we will have answered, and it will be in regard to one of the ancient weapons, and ultimately it will be through having some form of alliance with these weapons, 
that Luffy will find the One Piece, or ever, or at least deal with whatever comes out of him finding the One Piece. There's obviously something in regards to the various different mysteries that have popped up around the world of One Piece that coincide with what the One Piece is and represents. The Void Century, there's a connection there. It's irrefutable. There's no way there isn't some connection there. But it also feels as though it might have a connection with Momo as well. Something that... Odin had written in his travel log, seemed to have suggested that Momo has some major grand scheme connection with the rest of the world. The fact that he was able to hear Zunisha's voice and was able to even command it, it was one thing to hear it, Luffy could do that as well, but he could not command Zunisha. What is it about Momo that makes him so special? Special in a way that even Odin didn't seem to be special in. Or even Roger, because as far as we know, Roger couldn't command Zenisha and neither could Odin. Or maybe they didn't try. But what is so special about Momonosuke? You know, even Yamato pointed it out that Momo cannot die during this battle. There's some sig significance to Momo. There's some significance to Shirahoshi. I feel that we're also going to find out there's some significance to Vivi as well. That deep down, Vivi has a connection to the One Piece as well. Much in the same vein as Momonosuke and Shirohoshi. What that could be, I'm not sure. But the connection is apparent though. Each of them come from a kingdom that did not ally with the Celestial Dragons. Who did not conform to the New World Order after the fall of those who contained the Will of D. The Void Sentry, all that good stuff. Something about them being from these ancient bloodlines that have just existed within their homeland for since time immemorial. You know, the Nefeltari family, the family of Neptune, the family of Wano. They have just existed within these countries for so long and have a deep-seated love for their countries. That isn't to say that the likes of Riku Dolt's family and all that don't have love for their kingdoms, but the connection feels apparent. And the fact that you know, Shirahoshi has this connection with the Poneglyphs, and then Momonosuke has this connection with the Poneglyphs, and the first time we ever even heard of the Poneglyphs was in Alabaster. There has to be something there in Alabaster as well. And I feel like the three, you know, princesses and prince have some form of connection. Momonosuke, Vivi, Shirahoshi. There's something that connects them to the One Piece as well. But ultimately, this could just be me spitballing ideas. Uh, honestly, it basically is just that. But I feel like I'm on to something here. And with a few more clues, it could tip the balance. But what I'm certain of is that there's treasure, there's knowledge, and there's fun. <laughs> honestly. Or else... Roger wouldn't have laughed. There was something fun to be had with the One Piece. It was a, you need to see this for yourself to fully get it. Hell, I feel like even if Rayleigh had told Luffy what the One Piece was, it wouldn't have been even remotely as fun funny as it was to Roger and the rest of his crew. There's something joyous there at the One Piece, and you have to see it to believe it. You have to see it and experience it with your own eyes to fully find the joy in it. The fact that for years we had called the location of the One Piece Raftale, and we've Despite everything, we kept considering it some other name, only for it to be cleared up in One Piece Stampede of all places that its true name was Laugh Tale, a tale of laughter. I think Joy Boy's journey, much like Roger's, much like Luffy's, was the journey of someone who had so much fun, made so many friends, and enjoyed themselves so much. They gained treasure, 
great objects, a ship that was considered a weapon in and of itself. Everything that Luffy has come to possess simply on the journey that he's taken. Everything that Roger came to possess. It was only built up as something to be feared by people who just weren't able to let go, who couldn't just have fun and enjoy themselves. The real joy of the world. That's what I think One Piece is. Something joyous. Something to be celebrated. Something that is a celebration in and of itself. Something fun to be had. The tale to be told. Treasure to be had. Weaponry to just escape your worries and those who would do you harm. A world of imagination. A romance. But hey, don't just listen to me ramble on and on. Tell me, what do you think the One Piece ultimately is? Do you feel like maybe I was going in the right direction with all of this? Do you feel like I was just simply rambling? I'm interested to hear from you if maybe you have some thoughts and theories. I know this isn't the most original concept out here, but hey, everyone's stabbing in the dark. Why? What's one more going to matter? But I also want to hear from you. What do you think the One Piece is? What do you feel it is? What would make you the happiest to have One Piece be? Can't wait to hear from you. Please, also, like, comment, and subscribe for more One Piece Theory videos. And until next time, I've been Deuce This Then, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.